June. Hottest night in Gotham. Bruce Wayne is standing in the office of a notorious mob boss, Carmine the Roman Falcone. Bruce looks out the window to a celebration for a wedding for Falcone's nephew, Johnny Vitti. He notes how strange it is that recently Falcone had tried to off Vitti and now he's throwing in a elaborate party on his own dime? Falcone says he's just made a deal with some members of the Gotham City Bank to fund his exports of fine Italian shoes, which would provide a legitimate cover to launder any money he may make in his less-than-legal activities. Falcone knows he's got enough votes to win the support of the bank, but he also knows that nothing should be left to chance, and having Bruce Wayne's support would secure that outcome. Unfortunately, he does not know that Bruce has a conviction to stand against the criminal network in Gotham as the Batman. Bruce refuses the offer and leaves. On his way out the door, however, he notices a safe within the office. He stands at the door for a moment after leaving to eavesdrop, but Alberto Falcone notices him and directs him back to the party where he runs into Selena Kyle. Alberto is supposedly the good Falcone, the one that has never been part of the family business. Alberto goes into Falcone's office and tries to tell him that Bruce was snooping around, but Falcone brushes him off, only to be alerted by the presence of Harvey Dent snooping around the garage. He sends some men to take care of it, but luckily Bruce and Selena were on their way out just in time to intervene on behalf of the district attorney. When Harvey sees it's Bruce Wayne, though, he's a bit angry with them since he believes Bruce to be one of the rich that the rules don't apply to, clearly starting to become bitter with all of the people who think they're above the law. Selena is trying to make moves on Bruce, and he may just be a man, but he's got the dedication of a god, and basically tells her that he's not in the mood so that he can go off and do Batman stuff. He goes back to break into the safe he saw at Falcone's place, and no surprise, when he gets there, he finds that there's another thief already there, Catwoman. She thinks he's there to stop her, so she attacks immediately, only to then be interrupted by Falcone's goons, and then slip away. Falcone busts in, and in his anger, he places a bounty of a million dollars on both of their heads. Batman doesn't know who Catwoman is, but he knows that she's good at what she does, and the romantic tension between these two as Batman and Catwoman is amplified tenfold from them being together as Bruce and Selina. Catwoman is able to get away, though, when Batman sees the bat signal and heads over. Harvey, talking with Jim, asks if Barbara is okay with him spending so much time away from home, and Jim just kind of brushes it off like, oh yeah, she's fine, when clearly she is not fine. But Jim asks Harvey the same question, how's he doing with his new wife? Harvey says they're okay and nothing they can't work through, but it feels a lot like both of their marital lives are both experiencing rough patches with how much of the time they've currently been devoting on these obsessions with taking down criminals. Batman goes on to find Gordon, accompanied by Harvey and the Bat Signal, who want to talk with Batman about bending the laws to bring down Falcone, but not necessarily break them. At least that's what Gordon thinks. Harvey, on the other hand, seems really happy to be working with someone who's willing to take the necessary steps to bring these criminals down. Batman leaves them the transaction journal that he got from the safe and heads out, though not before mentioning to Jim that he actually even endorsed Harvey's run for DA, since he believes in him to actually be one of the few good men out there trying to do right by Gotham. Bruce is at a voting meeting for the Bank of Gotham, and the head chairman, Richard Daniels, is convincing the rest of the board that they should let Falcone have their way, when Bruce storms off, objecting to that, only to later return as Batman to scare Richard into quitting his position at the bank. This makes Bruce the new chief of the bank and allows him to veto the bank agreement. Falcone is just livid now and holds an emergency meeting. Here we see his biggest rival, Moroni, in the room, and now we learn that Falcone has brokered a sort of peace between the many crime networks by offering them a way to launder their money through the banks. Without the support of the banks now, though, the rest of this newly negotiated empire is under threat. Alberto tries to chime in with a solution, but Falcone is like, shut up, Alberto, you know nothing about our business, and now is not the time to try and teach you how to run it. He needs someone to prove the Falcone family hasn't gone soft. He needs his nephew, Johnny Vitti. Falcone sends Johnny to take out the old bank chief. We then see a mysterious person clamping a 22 caliber gun down and filing down the serial number. 
Gordon is in the kitchen with his wife, who's holding their baby with the baby bottle on the counter, and he gets a call that Richard Daniels has been murdered. He then calls Harvey's household and lets his wife Gilda know that she can go tell him. Gilda's obviously very worked up. She goes down to his workbench to let him know when we see an oddly familiar clamp with an unworried Harvey telling her that everything will be alright. Johnny Vitti is shot twice in the head. A 22 caliber gun is left at the scene of the crime along with the baby bottle nipple used as a silencer. Sound familiar? Batman meets up with Harvey and Jim, where Harvey is happy that someone finally took justice into their own hands to take out Johnny, but Jim immediately shuts that down and tells him that they don't get to decide who lives and who dies. They discuss possible suspects until Batman takes off after spotting Catwoman, who tells him that she just wants to be useful and helpful in this case to take down the Falcons. Batman is obviously suspicious of her motivation, but the fact that there's a million dollar bounty on her head might have something to do with it. Without the support of the banks, the crime bosses haven't been able to launder any money in months, and so as it stands, they've just been stockpiling it up in a warehouse. Batman and Harvey have broken into that warehouse, and with a little accelerant and a match, millions of dollars go up in smoke to send a message, hit him where it hurts. Harvey goes home to his loving wife in a good mood for the first time in months, maybe years. He has finally made an impact on the criminal network. After spending most of his life trying to put these criminals away, the only real impact he's ever made is the one he made tonight. But this will be the last happy moment for Harvey, for he does not know that right outside his house, a figure is waiting to detonate a bomb and end that happy fantasy.